What's going on guys, King Trats here back with another video on the channel. Today, we made spicy sausage pasta. Angel hair to be exact. You know the vibes, let me take you through the quick rundown. First thing we did, we cut up our spicy Italian sausages, turkey sausages to be exact. Put those on the stove top, let those sear on both sides, let those cook all the way through. And we took those off. We had some spinach, baby spinach, that I just had some steam water. I don't use oil when I make my spinach. I feel like you don't actually need it, um, and the taste comes out pretty much very similar. So I used water, garlic, ginger, and a couple of things, salt and pepper, real simple stuff. Just add those in, let those steam down. Obviously, you have to have like 90 pounds of spinach just to get like a handful of it. So that's what you see there. Then we had the angel hair pasta, that same pan with the sausage. Let that get those yum-yums off there with the olive oil. Use a tablespoon of that with there. And then we added some Nashville hot seasoning. I said I was gonna do this last week, so I just added a little bit. I wanted to see, I didn't wanna make it too spicy because eating a giant bowl of spicy pasta isn't exactly the best idea. So we added a little bit of that and some garlic to that as well. Then we sauteed the angel hand there, re-added the sausage, the spinach, let that all get happy, put that on a plate. And then we added just a little bit of Parmesan cheese, a little bit of pepper on the top of that. I wanted a real simple pasta dish today. I've just been in a real big pasta like mood. Ever since I made that pasta last week, I was like, yo, I gotta do more pasta stuff because I just feel like like the calories, everything, the bang for your buck you get with it is just, yeah, I don't know. Pasta is just, it's life. So let me get into this. Simple dish. There's nothing crazy going on here. I don't want to do, I like to let the pasta just speak for itself. So let me get you a nice with some spinach and of course, one of those sausage. Oh, you just ain't gonna work with me today. I feel you. Come see. You can't even see the sausage. <laughs> Pause. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I love, man. This is like right up my alley. Brenda Pasta's Barilla Protein Pasta. Um, I don't just use the regular OG pasta. I like to get the Barilla, the protein version, obviously has a little higher protein, a little bit more fiber, a little bit more nutrients in there. And truthfully, you can't taste the difference. So, I love using it. Oh, man. This is like just what the doctor ordered right now. And the real key, and you can kind of see it here, look. Let me turn this around for you right quick. Do you notice like there's a little bit of brown to that? What that is. That's so good. I just, I can't put into words how good this is right now. But what that is, I actually got this from a former client. She was Italian and she used to cook for me. She made broccoli rob for me one time. And I was like, yo, why is this so good? What's the difference between your broccoli rob and everybody else's? So she told me what she does is she slightly burns the garlic. And I come, I was like, isn't burnt garlic nasty? Yes, when it's super. But there's a little degree of difficulty to it. But you want to put the garlic on and just let it kind of like start to kind of burn and turn the pan down real quick. Like real quick. Like at that point, it's done. Throw the pasta in and toss it up. Like do not keep the pan on. You take it off the pan and then you start tossing it. It is like almost like a roasted garlic flavor to it. But what it adds is like a bit of like that bitterness that you get when you eat broccoli rabe. And if you don't want broccoli rabe, it's very similar to spinach, but it's kind of bitter. And I love broccoli rabe. So when she did it, uh, I just, I had to do it myself. Mm. And that was like four or five years ago, to be honest. And I've been doing it ever since when I do just like a simple, you know, aglio e olio. That's Italian for uh, garlic and oil. But that's what the dish is known as, pasta aglio e olio. And it's so good. And what I have in that oil too is a little bit of heat from that Nashville hot seasoning. And then from the Italian sausage, a little bit of that like 
more of that like sp spicy Italian sausage taste to it. Man. That's so good, bro. And after yesterday's cheese fest, I wanted something just like nice and simple. Look at this <laughs> big ass thing, I don't care. But I want something nice and simple. Hmm. I know y'all tired of me cooking rice all the time. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do pasta. I was super in the mood for it though. You know I eat rice like three, four times a week. But I went with the pasta this time. Oh my god, that's you know what I'm saying? All day. If you want to skip a step, you can actually use frozen spinach too. Just the FYI. Mm. Mm. Same thing though in total. This meal's like about $8. You know, I like the ball on the budget. And obviously, if you're not eating as much as I am, because I only eat once a day. This is like, y'all don't even see this. This is like the happy place. I just realized that there's like all this. All that sausage just under there. I was just waiting. Does anybody else get this happy when they eat? Mmm, mmm. And then like a little bit of that from the Parmesan. Oh my goodness. All day. All day. I do think fresh spinach is always better though. It's just a difference, but. I've eaten half of this. <laughs> I hate that laugh. But yeah, someone did suggest that I um, kind of do like a little, like a little mini series, or kind of like a budget bowler type of thing. This wasn't meant to be a part of it, but it would be. And the crazy part is, it's so interchangeable that if you wanted to double your recipe and keep the price the same, the reason this costs eight dollars is because it's turkey sausage, which is more expensive than just getting like the regular pork sausage. Like if you get like the Italian sausage, it's more cost effective. Now, that always depends on where you're from regionally. But as I've said before, the area where I live, um, specifically in Jersey, is like, I have a lot of Italian here. Sausage, as funny as it sounds, it's cheap here, especially Italian sausage. Um, Hell, you might be able to do this. I mean, if you in the Midwest, it's like, use some bratwurst or something, bro. I know bratwurst out there like a dollar, bro. <laughs> like a whole box. I remember that. Like, when you guys have barbecues out there, now, y'all don't even call them barbecues. Y'all call it grilling out. How to get used to that. But, the one thing that I had to get used to immediately, now again, this was in Iowa, but I, I was, you know, in Illinois for a little bit. Um, I'm just saying like visiting Illinois. I've been to uh, Missouri uh, One of my closest friends in college is from Missouri um, Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin Y'all got a lot of bratwurst, bro. <laughs> so much bratwurst So much to the point And I'm sure that's regional too because Here where I live You know how you go to the butcher in like the supermarket? Here, there's like a whole section. I just spit. I'm sorry. I felt it. But there's like a whole section of Italian sausage. Like mad Italian sausage. Like spicy, sweet. You want pork. You want veal. You want beef. Like it's just sausage. Like pause. But there's like mad sausage. <laughs> and when I was in the Midwest, there was a whole section of bratwurst. And like different flavors. So they have like beer brats, which are like the real like popular ones. But then they would have like pineapple, jalapeno they had. Um, I know I'm forgetting some, but they had like wild flavors. And 
what me and my friends used to do when I was in college out there was in the summer, we would go to hy V. A A lot of people, if you're from the Midwest, you probably like laughing because hy V is like the goat out there for me. Um, but we go to hy V, and we would go to that section and we would just get like a gang of brats, like, like 20 of them. And it would cost like, like less than $5. Like I'm not exaggerating, it was super cheap. And we would just grill and like chill out, talk, whatever. You know, some of them would like to have a little beers. I don't really like beer like that, but they would like, they love beers. Um, and then the crazy part is like, like Coors Light, but like weird beers. I don't like that beer. I don't, I'm not a beer guy, but everybody drank it. <laughs> it was like super wild. You would only think like the cowboy farm kid type of dudes drink beer, but mm -mm. athletes that look like me. <laughs> like, you want a beer? I was like, nah. <laughs> Y'all got some, let's get some, nah. I'm like, but they built different out there. You know. Personally, I'm not like that. I don't really like beer. Not, I'm not a beer person. But the other thing that I noticed too, and I'm, I don't know how I switch topics so fast. Women drink beer out there too. Women here don't really drink beer. You'll get looked at. Like, when you go out, and by the way, if you're under 21, drink responsibly. I'm not talking to you. Adults, everybody else, shush, shush. Wait till you're old enough. Seriously, wait till you're old enough. It's really not worth it. But out there, like when you would go out to a club, bar, whatever, women would be drinking tall boys. You know what a tall boy is exactly what it sounds like. It's a 24 ounce can of like a like, a, like this big, like. <laughs> and it, no, there's nothing wrong with that. It was just for me. I never saw that until I got out there, and when I came home, I never saw it again. But out there, it was perfectly like, you know, normal. Here, women tend to drink things like, like you know, like club soda stuff, like you know, like whatever they're drinking in club or like like the white claws are real popular out there beer bro which i think is more of like a cultural thing i don't really think like like do what you want i'm not saying it in like a derogatory way it was just like the difference you know but i will say this and i'm from jersey born and raised i've lived here most of my life except for when i was in college i lived in new jersey for the most part and um <laughs> my Jersey women were about to get mad at me. <laughs> Y'all gonna get mad, but I had to say it. Um, as a whole, not everybody. Don't get offended. If you get offended, you know the rule. Ninety percent. That means you part of the ten. Just, just, just listen. The women in Jersey are a lot more stuck up. <laughs> like, and I think that's a big reason why. Like, it's just different here. Like. Y'all don't want to be nobody's friend. <laughs> like I, I'm not like we we're and I think that's pretty much everybody here because in Jersey, like you don't really talk to strangers. Like when you're walking down the street or the person like like checking your bags out or like you know like you go to the grocery store and like the person that's boop you know doing that stuff. Um, what do you call that? Like I guess the clerk, the grocery store clerk or the cashier, whatever. But those people, the, the whatever, you know what I'm saying. And here. It is very much like, if anything, people might say like, how you doing? And like, how you doing good? And you keep going. And they boop, 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 get your stuff out, you get out. In the Midwest, strangers talk to you everywhere. It's like the amount of culture shock that I got when I got there because I was caught off guard. Like, I'm from Jersey, bro. Like, we're one of two states, Oregon being the other one that pump our own, like we don't pump our own gas. You go to the gas station, you get gas, you, you get an attendant, you ask them to pump your gas, whatever you get. Right? And for people who've never done it before, it, it's the equivalent of like ordering something at a bar or ordering like, a, like, a, like, a, like a, an order at a restaurant. 
So you pull up, you push your car in park, and you sit there. I know this sounds crazy, but it makes sense. And the gas station attendant, depending on how busy it is, will get to you, you roll your window down, and whatever you ask for, you want $10, right? Uh, unleaded, or regular, whatever. Uh, you know, 10 regular. Um, you can say fill it up regular, 20 regular. You can say like $15.62 regular if you want to. They'll put it in, you pump your gas, you get the money, you drive up. But we don't talk to them outside of that. They literally will be like, because I got to get gas a lot. So when I get my gas, I'm like, you know, I, they roll one down. I'm like, you know, I, I'm talking to an imaginary gas station person. But I'm like, hey, uh, you know, fill it up regular. And the guy will ask one thing, cash or credit. That's it. You say cash, he walks off, you say credit, he takes your card, and he fills your gas up. You never talk to him again unless he hands you back your receipt or your change, and you drive off. That's it. So, what I'm saying is, is with any kind of stuff, there's little to no interaction. Grocery store, convenience store, you ask people for your stuff, you get on about your business. Mail person, I don't know the name. I don't know my mail person's name. I have no idea. Out there, I'll never forget the first time I went to Hy-Vee, right? Went to get some food. And the, the amount of startledness, yes, I did that on purpose, but the amount that I was startled was like, I, I like short circuited. I'm not joking. Like I was legitimately frozen because here, get, get your stuff. How you doing? How you doing? Boom. Like, how you doing? You answer that with like, how you doing? <laughs> you say the same thing back out there. I remember for the first time I had my stuff and you boop, boop. And, 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 and the man that was running my stuff was like, how you doing? I was like, how you doing? He's like, oh, I'm good. Nice day. You know, weather's outside. Is it still raining? I'm like, no. <laughs> like, I was like, and then he kept asking questions. He was like, you find everything okay? You know, um, you know, the, I heard they have some new stuff over here. And I'm like, my brain was like, zzz, 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 like it was fried. I was, I couldn't believe this man was really legitimately concerned about my day. Like it was, I'm not saying it's weird. It was just different. I was just like, what? Like I was so shocked. Or like when you go, Mm. When you go to like a restaurant, you know how there's like a wait sometimes? Like people will start fucking talking to you, right? Like, I was so, we don't do that in Jersey. So when I say Jersey women are stuck up, that's what I mean. Like we're not friendly. And I think that says a lot about you, but like out there, like the girls with the beard, they were just super friendly. And I'm not saying that in any like, Funny way, and just friendly. Like, they just wanted to talk to you. Which, for me, people from Jersey, like, we're, we're, like, wired differently. So, when a stranger tries to talk to me, in my head, I'm like, yo, what's this person want from me? <laughs> like, you, you, like, like, low-key get kind of, like, standoffish. You don't realize it. Like, I have to, like, switch, especially in college, I had to switch, like, Midwest me and, 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 and like, Jersey me. And it got tiring. So, you just be like answering these questions. And I'm, in my head, I'm going like, they, they must want something from me. Like, nah. Because here, if a stranger talks to you, they're probably trying to sell you something. Right? You go to the mall, and, and you have a girl. They always love to do this. They love to do this. They would, they would find women, like, attractive type, whatever, friendly, just very, like, like nice person, like, bubbly type of, you know. And they, excuse me, sir. And in high school, they used to get me. They don't get me no more. <laughs> I'm trying to sell you sea salt, bro. Sea salt. Scrub. For your face. And they take you through the hole. They had a little sales pitch. When you were in high school, you didn't even know what the hell was going on. By the time you left, you had a whole sea salt uh, regimen. You know what the hell you just did? You spent like $42 on it. I wish I was joking, bro. They got me when I was in high school. And I remember getting home and scrubbing my face with the sea salt. It was a good product, by the way. I'm not going to lie. But I was scrubbing my face going, this got me. Damn, my skin feels great. But I can't believe I just spent $40 on some damn crystals. Salt crystals. She got me. She got me. But they be trying to do that, right? You go to the mall. You go anywhere. There's like a club promoter. Somebody trying to get something from you. Like, they don't just tell you. go to Times Square. Oh, they get tourists, bro. They be, hey, you know, let me just buy them. Next thing you know, you bought like 10 CDs. You don't even have a CD player no more. It's 2021. How you buy CDs? They get you. But out there? Nah. They just want to be your neighbor. How you doing, sir? 
do I know you? Oh, no, I just saw your car. <laughs> Weird, bro. The other thing that I noticed right away that I couldn't believe, people in the Midwest, bro, especially in, like, the smaller towns, because sometimes, like, I would go to, like, my teammates, like, a small town, eat weird casseroles, and I'll get to that, but... Start on. Whole family leave the house. Everybody. There's not a soul in there. I leave the door open. Open! I didn't say unlocked, bro. <laughs> open! It'd be a screen door, bro. Just open! And I'll never forget that. I don't know, I visited this family. There's a lot of casseroles out there. That's all I'm store. We went to the store to get some casseroles. The ingredients for the casseroles, which really consists of cream mushroom soup, some kind of weird noodle, and whatever the hell it was putting in there. You bake it off. I don't know what the hell it is. But I'm gonna be the last one out. Now sitting here unlocking the door? Tell me don't do that here. You just leave it open? Yeah. It's open, I'm close it. No, I'm closing. Short circuit. Zzz, zzz. Bro. <laughs> Now, yes, I grew up <laughs> when I was really young in a setting that you better lock your shit, <laughs> bro. Nah, but when my family moved to the suburbs, bro, by the time I was like teenager and we was in the suburbs and just in a little house, right? Yo, you check your whole house here, bro. I'm not playing. You go through a ritual, bro. I'm not like, this is not a joke. Whatever windows that you might open every once in a while, and even the ones you don't, you check all them windows, make sure they're locked, you do a little test, like make sure it don't move, right, bet. Make sure your doors are locked, the light. <laughs> That's what we do. I don't really know, is that black people thing? I might be. I don't really have like a, like a, like a barometer because I grew up in, like a, in a black house, like it is what it is. I can tell you this though, this is a black thing. I don't know, I think my Latinos might do this too. This is the funniest shit you'll ever hear. Black people. <laughs> Everybody else who's not black, just listen. I love y'all. Maybe y'all do this too, because I know some of y'all got soul. But this, <laughs> this is universal, and it makes me laugh because we all do it. I still do it to this day. I don't really know why. <laughs> hey, do y'all have a forever light in your house? Do you know what a forever light is? A forever light is the light in your house that under any circumstance that shit does not get turned off. The light is on <laughs> all the time. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Now in most houses, including mine, <laughs> I don't know if this is a black house thing, but I think it is because I've never seen it in other people's houses. It'd be the light above the damn stove, bro. Why <laughs> do we leave that shit on all the time? And you know what the funny part is? Somebody laughing right now because you know I'm right. Here's the funny part. Did you know that forever light over that stove? Did you know it never burns out? It never burns out. I go visit my mom's house right now. That goddamn light is on, and she has never changed that bulb, bro. <laughs> Twenty some odd years, it's the same bulb, and that light been on. I don't know why, but it's on. Midnight, it's on. Two a.m., it's on. You go to the bathroom, that damn light is on. I'm gonna tell you the whole, because it's another thing we do. I don't know why. My mom always said this, like. My mom used to close the kitchen. Like <laughs> some fucking barbecue joint or a store or some shit. But when she closes the kitchen, you better not be in that damn kitchen. Kitchen's closed. That's <laughs> what she said. Kitchen closed. I don't know what the hell that meant. You can still walk in there because you heard them steps. Bruh. I used to be a night thirsty as hell. Like, parched. Sneaking. Be filling up my water like this. Like the slowest you ever felt that water. You don't want to make no noise. My house wasn't the greatest house, right? So, you had to learn how to step right. Because if your step was wrong, you stepped on a certain part and you hear that. Mm -mm. I couldn't do it. Kitchen be closed, bro. But I don't know what it is. That damn forever light. I got a light like that in my house right now. I never turn it off. It's always on. It's on right now. When I go to bed and wake up, it's still on. I don't know why. That light on, no. Does anybody know why we do that? Why is that light always on? Which I think I'm playing. I already know, because y'all my people, so I know y'all done wrote the shit in the comments already, because y'all know I'm right. That forever light is forever on. And it's, well, I don't know who made that light bulb, but that light bulb does not blow out. Nope. It'd be the one with that little, because some people had a fan, but even if you don't have a fan, you got a light. It's in your kitchen somewhere. Most likely it's above that stove. And you've never changed that bulb. Never. 
tell me I'm wrong. I'm no, I know it ain't just me. Forever light. <laughs> That's what I call it. It's forever light, bro. I don't know what I mean. I don't really know if there's a universal thing like that. The one other thing I'll say, and I'm bounce up out of here because you know I'm finishing my food. But the only other thing I can say that's universal was in my Latino and Hispanic, Hispanic people's houses. Um, I don't know why y'all did this, but the pots and pans was always in the stove. The pot, the, the stove also doubled as the pot and pan storage unit. Where's the pots and pans? Open that bitch up me. <laughs> Just laid and, and they clean and they're ready to go, but they're in the stove. That's where they went. It was in the stove. And I feel like um, most people have a nothing drawer, right? You have a drawer in your kitchen that, like, there's just a bunch of shit in there. You don't really know what's in there. You might have, like, a couple batteries, like a calendar, like, like fucking chopsticks, takeout containers, McDonald's uh, 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 condiment, like, like a sweet and sour sauce be in there. You, it's just stuff. Like, if you can't find it, it's probably in there. You just keep your stuff in there. I don't know what's in there, but I feel like, I don't know if that's everybody, but I know that most people have a nothing drawer uh, in their kitchen. I don't know really what the hell the purpose of the damn nothing drawer is, because you don't use anything, but if you throw anything out in there, the next day you'll need to find it. So don't ever throw anything out in your nothing drawer. I learned it the hard way. I think I had like a screw in there, like a screw. Um, and I needed the screw. I threw it out. So, but, <laughs> shit, I don't know. I think that's it. Is there any other weird stuff like that? Everybody house had it. I also know that, like, for some unforeseen reason, most black people don't keep their water in the fridge. There was never... I can go to my mom's house right now, to, to, today, bro, and there will be a container, like, like, like bottles of water on the floor somewhere where water don't go. But it's there. I'm pretty sure she keep it, like, in the, in the back hallway. I don't know why. Nobody drinks the water in the fridge, bro. They don't put the water in the fridge. I don't know why the fuck that is, but it's not in the fridge. It's never in the fridge. If you thirsty, get your ass out there, get you a bottle, and, and it's cracked open, right? It'd be the container, and somebody put their damn hand in there. Nobody goes through the side. No, it's on the top, and you just keep grabbing from that little one spot uh, on the top. I think that's it, right? Anything else? Anybody got one? I feel like those are the ones that I was in my house. Definitely in my house. Um, I know a lot of black people save grease, too. The oil, uh... My mom didn't do that though, cause she was kind of bougie, so she would never. She didn't really fry a lot of shit either. She fried shit sometimes, but she ain't saving. Like most people, like my friends, you know, at least the the black ones, like they would have like the like it'd be like a fucking Folgers can. If <laughs> they have it right next to the shit, and they had like three of them, cause one was for fish, and one was for chicken, and the other one was for other. Whatever the hell else she fried, <laughs> chicken, fish, and other, and they had three of them, and they didn't be marked. But somehow they know which one's which. Don't ask me. I had one friend, he fried everything, bro. He had, uh, like, Crisco, though. He used to use Crisco. I mean, you know, Crisco. My mom would never use Crisco. She was too bougie for that. She used Wesson. There's always Wesson. That one damn brand of vegetable oil. That's it. We ain't had no money for peanut oil. It's too expensive. Vegetable oil. That's it. They use peanut oil now, but not back then. She got, like, the super jug of that shit. She don't even be cooking no more. It don't matter. But y'all get what I'm saying. Let me know if you got some more, because those be cracking me up, man. I don't know. I, I'm sure there's some for, like, other ethnicities and stuff, but I'm really, like, I'm black. I don't really grow up in other people's houses. Um, I know in the Midwest they just make casseroles and shit. Stupid amount of casseroles. Y'all never seen the casseroles like this in your life. Casseroles. One more casserole. Before I leave, I have to tell you about this casserole. They use a can of tuna. And egg noodles, cream of, I don't know what cream of soup, every house in the Midwest had every cream of soup, celery, mushroom, chicken, I didn't even know these existed until I got out there, and they take that shit, right, and they mix it up, <laughs> they don't even cook the noodles, nah, you just mix it up, you put it in a casserole dish, and you take Ruffles potato chips, bro, I'm not making this up, bro, somebody has had this shit, Ruffles potato chips, you just lay it across the top, and you bake it, and I think there's cheese of some sort in there too. In fact, isn't there a tuna helper because of like that? Oh man, tuna helper, bro. That's a trench meal. That's what I'm saying. Y'all act like hood people different from y'all, but y'all will make fucking that. And you act like we different in the hood. Like, that's a hood meal, bro. Y'all use tuna, bro. Tuna, you ain't hood. Y'all hood. Y'all just don't realize that. Because y'all ain't rich either. Y'all, you know, middle class, lower class, whatever the hell it is. But if you put tuna in a casserole, you are not any. That's a hood meal. 
Stop lying to yourself. I'm just playing with y'all. Y'all know. I'm just saying there's not much of a difference between. I'm from the trenches, bro. We used all that funny stuff too, but y'all y'all made tuna helper, bro. <laughs> it is with it. I love y'all. We back. I'm in the kitchen tomorrow again, man. I don't know what the hell I'm making, but I love y'all. We back tomorrow. More content. Yes, sir. The hand signs. They made it to YouTube.